Blizzard massively increased the drop rate of Feralath, the legendary two-handed strength axe from Farak this week, and it is a huge, huge difference. Based on data mined information, which isn't guaranteed to be 100% accurate, but it feels right, the drop rate after 14 heroic kills went from the old chance of about 16% up to a new value of 100%. That's right, it is guaranteed after 14 heroic kills, or 6 mythic kills, or some unknown smaller number of combined kills based on how many lesser embers of Feralath you've obtained from other bosses throughout the raid. Hi, it's Lerald, and I got the legendary this week on my paladin. The questline to unlock and actually start using it was a pleasant surprise, as is playing red paladin. It's extremely fun and strong, and I was not prepared for that. So usually these kind of questlines take days or weeks of farming, or they require you to go back into the raid to kill a massive number of bosses, and a lot of the time anything that you've already killed that week won't count, so you have to wait until the next lockout, and then it might take a long time. It's some real horror stories in the past. But I have good news. That's not how this one works. I did the whole questline in 10 hours from start to finish, and if I knew then what I know now, it would have been significantly faster, probably more like 5 or 6 hours total. I did about 75% of the questline solo, but I got some help from my channel manager with the two more annoying parts, so having friends will make this faster, but that's not strictly required. Now let's get into what you have to actually do. When the item drops from killing Farak, you will first try to equip it. It will stun you and the game will say no, basically. It'll be thrown back into your bags as a quest item. You get a quest to go to Northern Thaldrassus, and you're sent to visit three crafting NPCs with follow-up quest lines from each of them. Each of them gives you a quest in the Emerald Dream. One quest is to disenchant epic items. It gives you a special disenchanting rod with a five minute cooldown. You need to disenchant items until you get 20 dust, and you get one to two dust per item. This seems hard, like you have to hold on to epic items, but it's not, it's super easy. You can just buy plate gloves or helm or whatever from the reputation vendor for 300 Dragon Isles resources, and that actually counts just fine. So you can blow through a couple thousand worthless Dragon Isles resources, and there you go. You also have to kill rares. This is a very annoying requirement. You have to tether to the rares using a quest item before entering combat with them. You want to make sure you remove all slash stop casting lines from any interrupt macros you have because that will cancel the quest item buff and the rare kill will then be worthless. This mechanic sucks, it's very stupid, there's no nice way to say it. It is a dumb idea, it's the kind of thing you do if you hate the players, and I'm not saying that they do, but if they did, this is the mechanic they would make to punish players for playing the game. You need 50 of the quest items, rares drop 1 to 3. I usually got 2 or 3, hardly ever got 1. So I would say about 20 to 25 rares is what you need, and any rares will actually work. So Emerald Frenzies are a great place to go farm. They spawn fairly often throughout, uh, throughout the Emerald Dream, and they spawn tons of big Lash rares. You can spawn those guys, I don't remember their exact name, Frenzied Lasher I believe, you spawn them by killing random mobs in the area until they pop up. If you and other people are farming in the area, you might get 5, 6, 7 uh, of the big Frenzied Lasher rares, her frenzy, it, you know, if you're really slamming. And as long as you are out of combat first, then tap them with the quest item and then go kill them, they count as a rare every time. So pretty good, it can really expedite this whole process. The final boss of a super bloom also counts as a rare. You have to run away until you drop combat, then fly back and tag it with the quest item before engaging. There are also just tons of little rares scattered throughout the zone. Some of them are spawned by player actions like going into a cave and like interacting with an NPC in there. Some of them are just kind of hanging out just out in that world or inside the caves. There are lots of little guys to find just by flying around and looking. And finally, there are super rares. Super rares are visible on the map and they have like 20 to 30 times more health than the little rares. They might have like 30, 40, 60 million health, and a super rare or a regular tiny rare might have one and a half million. And the issue with the super rares is they only drop one to three of the quest items still. So you can kill them. If a group is there, it'll be faster and you are able to see them anywhere zone wide on your map. So that helps with finding them. But if you're doing it alone, it's generally pretty slow. So they're actually, they're the most obvious thing to kill, but they're actually the worst thing to kill because they take a long time. And then the third quest is to complete Super Blooms. This is the worst part of the entire quest line by far. You need 200 Dream Leaf from the Super Bloom to complete this quest. This took more time than every single other part of the entire quest line combined. And honestly, it still wasn't that bad. Each stage of the Super Bloom you complete grants you a bag. 
I mean, this is just like a basic overview of Super Blooms. Each bag will have stuff in it, including the quest items that you need. Each rank of the Super Bloom bags has more. So the epic one for fully completing a Super Bloom, getting 8,000 Bloom from it, has like four times more stuff than the green bag for only getting like one third of the way through the Super Bloom. The final boss also drops a bunch of Dream Leaf as well. On top of that, the quest reward bag for completing the Super Bloom quest once each week also has a big stash of dream leaf in it. So if you full complete every single super bloom, it may take maybe like five or six full super blooms to be done. I was doing it late at night without joining raids, like mostly just doing this solo for the first five hours or so. And I absolutely recommend joining super bloom raids in the custom group finder that will make this part suck a lot less. My non raid super blooms were not full completing most of the time. You can also get help from friends. Some of the super bloom bags will contain a leaf that you can use on party members to give them a quest. They complete that quest by finishing the super blooms and opening super bloom bags. Once they hit 100% on the completion there, they are able to hand that quest into the same quest giver that gave you the initial super bloom quest and then they get an item they can use on you to grant you 50% extra dream leaf from the super blooms. It sends them all the way out into the Anaran Plains which is like really weird and inconvenient that they have to go out there but I, you gotta do it I suppose. I found that the buff would fall off if I logged out or left the party from that person, which is kind of dumb, but there was another weird interaction that was actually pretty helpful, probably unintended. If you get the quest from someone else, who is also on the legendary quest line, you can use the bonus Dreamleaf quest reward on yourself instead of them, and then you get 50% more Dreamleaf for yourself, and that persists through logging out and dropping groups and even getting the legendary itself. So the best move is probably to trade the quest back and forth with other people who are working on the legendary. But if you have a friend who is nice and committed to helping you finish the thing quickly, having them help is great. It did help me a lot. Save me probably another hour or two of super blooms. Maybe more, I don't know. I really got tired of hearing the same four dialogue lines from the big tree during the super blooms, so literally any amount of time saved on that at all is definitely worth it. That is probably the worst aspect of this entire quest line. It's just how often the super bloom quest guy spams the same four voice lines. Once you have finished all three of the farming quests in the Emerald Dream, you can hand each of them in to the appropriate NPC and you'll get a follow up crafting quest. This will require a lot of materials. I think the overall price to buy everything I needed on a Friday night was around 200,000 gold. I know a lot of people have complained about that. I don't think it's so bad. It could be better. It could be zero gold. I think that would definitely be better. But 200,000 gold for an insane axe, less than a wild token, it's a price I'm willing to pay. You will need an enchanter, a scribe, and a leather worker to do these three crafts. And there are three approaches you can take to going about this. First, you can just find a crafter. Maybe you have a friend who can help or a guildie, or you just recruit somebody from trade chat, offer to pay him a thousand gold or something. They do not need to be level 100 in the profession. They do not even need to be level 70. You can be level one dragon Isles enchanting level 61 character. That's all you need. Once they are in the party, you use the quest item on them that temporarily grants the crafting recipe. You send them a work order for that item. They craft it easy peasy. Second option. Let's say you have no friends or your friends are all asleep and you don't care about one of your professions. You can drop a profession and pick up inscription and do the inscription craft yourself, then drop that and repeat with enchanting and leatherworking. This is super easy. Third option, this is the weird one. Let's say you do care about your professions and you have no friends and you have some alts on that server with those professions. This is a suggestion that came from a wowhead comment by Raxiel and it is something I've done very similar to this approach for soloing the Shadowmourne questline in ICC, doing the blood infusion. So as soon as I saw the comment, I knew exactly where they were going here. You can use your alts to craft for your main. Here's their comment. Step one, put both characters in roughly the same place. Crafting benches are a good spot. Although if you have a slow computer, a quiet area might be better. I will also add the note that if you do have a slow computer, slow internet or whatever, turning off your add-ons is a good idea too for just making your load speed faster. Step two, create a custom group in the group finder tool. Step three, log onto your alt and request to join. Step four, log back onto the character with the legendary and invite them. Step five, log back onto the alt and accept. Now log back onto your legendary holder without the alt disappearing. The way you do this is by tricking the server into thinking you've disconnected. And instead of logging off the normal way, you start a second copy of the game, log into that character as quickly as you can. You should still see your alt standing there. 
while you're on that character with the legendary, with the quest item, you target the alt and you cast the notes at them. The cast takes about five to 10 seconds and then starts a 30 minute cooldown on the item while the alt, the crafting character, gets a matching buff that lets them craft the item. At this point, I send a crafting order for that item to the alt. You could have done that before doing this. That's fine as long as they have the profession. Once that's done, you can just very safely log back onto the alt, complete the crafting order. You have half an hour to do that. Pretty safe at this point. Then you switch back onto your main, you check your mail, the quest item is there. So this is the approach I used. I did the enchanting craft with a level 61 mage who only learned enchanting a few minutes before I did this. If you have a friend to help you with inviting your main and your alts to the group so that you don't have to do the group finder thing, that is helpful. Although at that point, you probably just wanna ask them to help with the crafts instead. If they're not on your server, which was the case for me, then they can't craft for you, but they can at least help invite your main and crafting alts. Crafting orders really should be cross-realm already, it's pretty dumb that they're not. Hopefully this is something that will change in the war within. Okay, now that you've finished all three of the crafts, you get quests to test each of them out. The simplest test requires you to try to grip the weapon 10 times. Each time you do, you get set on fire and stunned for 10 seconds, and the fire will deal massive damage to you, like between 10 and 25% of your health per second. There are two main ways to deal with this. You can craft salve, which is a quest uh, given by the quest giver. It makes you immune to the burn, but it only has three charges, so you will have to craft it four times. And it's a bit expensive. It requires Zerolic Glow Spores, Awakened Frost, and a Dreaming Essence. It's several thousand gold to make. The other way is to just recruit a healer, which is what I did. My channel manager logged onto a Holy Priest and just blasted me in the face with heals each time I gripped the weapon. You can use defensive cooldowns and trinkets before stunning yourself with the weapon, such as the Farak Shield Trinket, that is one that I used on one of them, but you're going to need some external healing. I read that you can't Divine Shield the, the debuff off, but I did not find that to be true. I Divine Shielded the 10th burn, and it counted and completed the quest for me. If you have a friend to heal you, this part is super easy. If not, you do want to recruit somebody, maybe pay them to do it. The weapon has a 30 second cooldown and you have to grip it 10 times, so it takes a minimum of five minutes. And that part is kind of stupid. It just sort of feels like a waste of time, but not as much of a waste of time as the second part. The second part, you get a book that you use and it causes you to launch out unstable elements over 10 seconds. The book has a five minute cooldown. You use the book, then once the cast is finished, you can use your extra action button to burn some awakened essences. We're talking like awakened fire, frost, earth, that sort of thing. It'll be randomly chosen and you have to use about 10 each time. Then you get a follow up extra action button on use to absorb some stabilized essence or something and doing that grants you 5% completion. If you have party members, they can catch the unstable elements that are raining out from your book and use their extra action button and their awakened essences to help you make this a little bit quicker. They can only do this once per book use per player, so if you have a bunch of friends who are willing to help, this will be faster, but otherwise it's a bit slow. Doing it solo, you need to do it 20 times, so 100 minutes. If you have one friend and they catch and use the essence right every single time, that'll cut the amount of time in half, so 50 minutes. It's pretty basic, you can just keep buying the quest item and use it every five minutes for close to two hours. Make sure you have a bunch of awakened essences in your bag beforehand and you're good to go. If you run out of essences for some reason, you have five minutes to buy some and use your extra action button. So it is pretty relaxed, it's just kinda slow. The final test is the only one that actually feels good and makes much sense to me, really. You have to kill three raid bosses with the same tether mechanic that you used while fighting rares. The three bosses are Gnarl Root, Agira, and Volkaros. You can do this on any difficulty. A guildie did it in Mythic Raid this week, and I just did it on LFR in the middle of the morning. LFR was probably harder than normal or even Mythic due to people insta-pulling because just like with the rares in the Emerald Dream, you have to apply the tether before the pull starts. It won't pull the bosses, but it must be applied before someone pulls, and in LFR, a hunter is basically guaranteed to insta-pull. If someone does that, you can try to pull the boss out of the room really quickly and reset it, or you can just do LFR again. It happened to me, it was annoying, but Whatever, it's worth it to get a legendary. You will also be slowed throughout the fight. Just make sure you don't die to any mechanics and that's pretty much the whole quest. Once you've done all three testing quests, you need to smith the ax. At this point, you're in the home stretch. This is a couple of very basic breadcrumb quests that will send you to 
the Obsidian Sanctum in the Waking Shore. It culminates with a scenario in which you fight a Shadow of Farak in Aberus. I wasn't sure if this would be an AoE fight or a single target fight, and I thought it would be challenging, so I used a single target raid talent setup, and it's an AoE fight, and it's pretty easy. Not really challenging, honestly, easier than the Super Blooms, I think. You have to cleave down some very basic adds that spawn throughout the fight, then you have to interrupt and kill some big single target guys. That's pretty much all there is to it. You just repeat that until you get told to use your extra action button to break Farak's shield. You do that, then you GPS him for a while, repeat it until he's dead, and then you get a pretty cool cutscene showing off your amazing new axe. I am super happy with it. I never thought I would care about Rep Paladin or this axe on a DPS spec that wasn't Fury Warrior, but I really, really do. Rep Pally is extremely fun, and despite some initial undertuning concerns with the axe, I think it is absolutely where it needs to be now. I know tons more players will keep acquiring this throughout the rest of Season 3 and Season 4 due to this massive increase to the drop rate, and I think that's great. This was honestly very fun other than the number of super blooms I had to do, and I did make those take a lot longer for myself by doing them in the middle of the night and not finding a raid in the group finder. If I had to make any recommendations for this, it would be that. Make sure you do all of the super blooms in raids, that will probably cut your time on this quest line in half compared to how it was for me. I'm probably going to play around with Rep Paladin, most likely just some Mythic Plus, nothing all too super serious, but if you'd like for me to talk about it on the channel, please leave a comment. Alright, I hope this was a fun look into this most recent legendary and that it helps anyone who's on the quest. Thanks for watching. Bye.